Digoxin is the oldest cardiovascular drug still in contemporary use. At one time, about 80% of heart failure patients were on Digoxin. Now, in the May 13 issue of Jack, there is a state-of-the-art paper on the use of Digoxin in patients with worsening chronic heart failure, and it is reconsidering an old drug to reduce hospital readmissions. And I am with, uh, I'm very honored to be with Dr. Mihai Shirjani, who is Professor of Medicine and Surgery and Director of Experimental Therapeutics at the Center for Cardiovascular Innovation at Northwestern University's Feinberg School of Medicine. Now, why Digoxin, why now? That's an excellent question. So I think we need to put things into perspective. First of all, let's realize that we have two types of heart failure is the outpatient with stable heart failure, it, and is the patient who's hospitalized with chronic and worsening heart failure. What do we know about those patients who are hospitalized for heart failure? That they are receiving optimal medical therapy, they receive a diuretic initially, within 24 hours they feel very well. Most patients at the time of discharge have minimal or no signs of congestion, and yet, within 60 to 90 days of follow-up, the mortality is 15%, and rehospitalization is 35%. A total event rate of 50%. This event rate has not changed in the last 15 years. This 50% event rate had not changed. In spite of the fact that we invest the $22 billion to find new drugs Correct. for this condition. And I'm not pleased to report that every study to date has been negative. So when we have this event rate and we have a drug approved by the FDA, not in 1950, but in 1987, the question that comes to everybody's mind is how come you have a drug approved for heart failure by the FDA under very strict regulation and it's used, as you pointed out, drop from 80 to less than 20 percent. Our NIH trial demonstrated conclusively, article published in English of Medicine, that the addition of digoxin to standard therapy significantly reduces hospitalization Moreover, in three pre-specified subgroups, patients with cardiomegaly, or patients uh, with a very low EF, or patients with severe congestion, the addition of digoxin improved total mortality and decreased total hospitalization. So at least in my mind, for those patients that are somewhat similar to patients with worsening heart failure, the data it is very clear. Another thing that we need to keep in mind is that every trial conducted to date showing a benefit from a beta blocker or an ACE inhibitor or an ARB or a CRT were conducted in patients receiving digoxin. So by not using digoxin is the same thing like saying, well, we have a beta blocker, why should you use an ACE inhibitor? Because the beta blocker is beneficial. So I never understood how we don't stop using ACE inhibitors because beta blocker are beneficial, or stop using beta blocker because the CRT is beneficial. So I think the, the issue with digoxin is that uh, did not improve total mortality, and it's not at the level of a beta blocker, for example, but has other attributes, particularly for hospitalizations, that are related to congestion, are related to hemodynamics. And digoxin is an agent that safely improves hemodynamics. The rehospitalization, it's congestion stupid. It's all about high feeling pressure and cardiac output. So you have a drug that safely improves cardiac output and decreases the wedge pressure. It's not rocket science that you're going to see a decrease in Respiration. In fact, I have a paper in the American Journal of Medicine showing clearly that digoxin is reducing the 30-day hospitalization, which is a big thing nowadays in the United States because... It's required right, to reduce it. Right, right. So I think the only thing that one needs to do is to review the available data 
and to make up his mind. It's not me convincing them or you convincing them. Are people who know the data and people who don't know the data. And that, I think, is the problem. What are the limitations of the drug? What are the downsides of using it? Are there any that... Uh, first of all, out? yes, it's very inexpensive. And that's a problem because, you know, it is we're promoting very, we're promoting CRT, ICD. Uh, matter of fact, the Jackson, if you look at the guidelines, it's after CRT and after uh, uh, ICD. So first ICD is CRT, then you can say the Jackson. Inexpensive, I think it's a problem because it's no, there are no big returns. So it's no promotion. Right. Keep, keep in mind that the uh, Jackson have been promoted, and this meeting today, it's unique because we talk about the Jackson. When was the last time at the ACC in the last 50 years to talk about the Jackson? I don't think it's you'll find. Well, it has been a while. Okay. Yeah. Well, so if, so uh, downside it can be toxic. Uh, what we've seen in the DITCH trial, retrospectively, that if the serum concentration is above one nanogram per ml, the mortality actually may be increased. So in terms of mortality, it has a bidirectional effect. A low dose decreases mortality, a higher dose increases mortality. Not so for hospitalization. They are reduced independent of serum concentration. However, our DISH trial show clearly that you don't need to monitor serum concentration. If you use a low dose and the patient is not at risk of developing DISH toxicity, 0.1 to 5 is an ideal dose. And if you use 0.1 to 5, the serum concentration will be around 0.7 nanogram per ml. Do you think one of the reasons that it has fallen into disuse is because there are so many other drugs out there that you've got patients on a variety of, of pharma, pharmacotherapies and the last thing they want to do is put another drug into the mix? No, I think it's the promotion. So maybe if we can uh, talk about your, your state-of-the-art paper in check, we'll get more people to prescribe. This maybe or maybe old, not. This M classic M maybe or maybe not. <laughs> this classic drug. Yeah. It is. It's the oldest uh, drug still in contemporary use, and it is a fascinating story in the May 13 issue of Jack, and it is a state-of-the-art paper. Please read it uh, for Dr. Shershadi and for Cardiosource World News. I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.